In 1868 to late 1869, the Māori chief Te Tokawaru from the South Taranaki tribe of Ngāti Ruahine, shown here on the left, led a force of around 400 men on a successful campaign against British colonial forces in New Zealand. They managed to get as far as establishing the Tauranga Ika Pā, which bordered on the settler town of Wanganui. This posed the immediate threat of, to remove a large percentage of settlers from the Taranaki region within days. However, over one night the Māori force disbanded, leaving only a few loyal warriors that would stay with Te Tokawaru. The most common thought of the sudden dispersion was that Te Tokawaru had committed adultery with another chief's wife, which was a serious breach of the laws of Tapu. This caused many of the followers of Te Tokawaru to believe that they were now cursed and immediately gave up their cause. There were many factors that led to Te Tokawaru to take this path of his believed justice of bloodshed and hardship. However, this was not the first war to have happened in the Taranaki and Wanganui region. War between Māori and settlers in the area had been going on for years, the major ones being the first Taranaki war happening in the years of 1860 to 1861, followed shortly by the second Taranaki war in 1863 to 1866, the common factor of the cause of war being over ownership to land. <coughs> This was helped caused by the fact that in 1858, settler populations in New Zealand for the first time overtook the Māori population of New Zealand. This resulted in a large increase for the de demand of land and also allowed the Europeans to be more aggressive towards Māori, as they now had a strong fighting population hungry for land and wealth, and were willing, if given the, ch the chance, to use force against Māori given any opportunity to acquire more land. In 1860, the settlers saw their chance to gain more land when the Kingitanga movement, which was seen as an act of treason towards Her Majesty the Queen Victoria, took up arms after increased friction between the Auckland settler government over land rights and Māori independence. This resulted in a conflict known to be part of the New Zealand Wars. This helped to lead to the Land Settlements Act of 1863, which put easily was the government's dream as it confiscated the land from any tribes considered to be rebels who had fought against the Crown with the Kingi Tanga movement or previous conflicts. Not by coincidence, the land confiscated was also the finest farming land available in the North Island, with parts of Taranaki and the Waikato. Part of this land included Te Tokawaru's tribal land. Te Tokawaru's land had been considered confiscated because there were a few Paimatere soldiers from this tribe that had gone off to fight for the Kingi Tanga movement, which the religion of Paimatere strongly believed in. Te Tokawaru was also a Paimatere prophet, a religion brought in by the prophet Te Uahaumene, which adopted Christian beliefs into Māori culture, which resulted in an anti-European religion which supported Māori independence, something Te Tokawaru strongly believed in and had fought for in, it in the earlier years. It is no surprise that when British soldiers were sent into the Taranaki region, to push Māori off the so-called confiscated land to allow the settlers to quickly move in, that when European forces managed to reach Te Tokawaru's land, he reacted in force by attacking surveyors and troops to block the occupation of Māori land. Fortunately for Te Tokawaru, government soldiers were spread thin at the time because of Te Kuiti's attacks on the west coast causing trouble for settlers. This allowed Te Tokawaru, who was still considered hopelessly outnumbered, to strike back at the troops in the South Taranaki region. This was not the only time Te Tokawaru tried to get his message across to the Europeans in the South Taranaki region. One incident shortly after the three settlers were killed saw him send a letter about a colonial soldier who was eaten, saying, My throat is constantly open for the flesh of man, which frightened many settlers in the region and allowed Te Tokawaru's message to become clear. The government's response to Te Tokawaru's actions was a large force of colonial militia and kūpapa. They were sent to capture Te Tokawaru. These forces were led by Thomas MacDonnell, Major Kemp, the kūpapa leader, and Major Von Temski, the forest rangers leader, who excelled in guerrilla warfare. The government forces outnumbered Te Tokawaru's by around 12 to 1. But Te Tokawaru was no fool and chose to lure MacDonnell into a trap. Te Tokawaru did this by taking a British redoubt at Tuturu Mokai on the 12th July with 60 men, where 16 soldiers were shot out of the 25 men stationed there. This provoked MacDonnell into attacking Te Tokawaru's pa 
at Tenutu or Timanu. A few months later, MacDonnell retaliated on the on 21st of August by attacking Te Tokawaru's home pa of Tenutu or Timanu. However, the pa had been set up as a trap. As MacDonnell's soldiers attacked, they came under heavy fire from the trees around the pa where Te Tokawaru had set up ambush points. During the fighting, Major Von Temsky was killed, causing a serious blow to morale of the British troops, who had also lost the battle and were forced to retreat. The battle caused many soldiers to mutiny and desert. Also, Kupapa tribes returned home, helping even the odds of the war by a considerable margin. The word of Titoko's wider victory was heard by tribes in the surrounding area, and also the Kingitanga, and men flocked to join his war on the creeping confiscation. The numbers of his forces were now around 150 to 200 men, over double than what he started with, showing how Titoko Wada's influence was spreading and how far it had spread. It was not long, however, that the next engagement was to take place. A small camp pa had been set up at Motoroa, not far from Patea, to again provoke an attack in an area of Titoko Wada's choosing. Again, Titoko Wada, knowing he would be outnumbered, used another ambush technique and strategically placed this pa to have a trench and its flanks covered. Colonel George Whitmore, who has now replaced MacDonnell, led his forces of around 400 to 500 to attack the pa on, an, on the misty morning of 6 November 1868. Once again, the battle was one-sided, with British and Kupapa forces being cut down from all sides, forcing a retreat and another victory for Te Tokawaru. Te Tokawaru lost only one soldier during that fight, while Whitmore's casualties were 19 dead and 20 wounded, a substantial defeat. These words have been mentioned by James Balich. Whitmore was simply unfortunate enough to be a good general matched against an excellent one. Te Tokawaru's tactics and leadership, which led to another victory, saw his influence reach new boundaries. As settlers in Wanganui sent their children to Wellington for safety, and Te Tokawaru now had around 400 soldiers at his command. At the height of his power in early 1869, Te Tokawaru had a thousand Māoris following him, 400 of which were capable of fighting. Te Tokawaru was now at a striking distance of Wanganui, as he set up the fortress pa of Tauranga Ika, considered to be impregnable by Whitmore. Not long after, the pa was empty and the war was soon but over, as Whit as the Whitmore's forces chased down the fleeing Māori and took back the land which they lost. After two victorious battles and a strong campaign, the war was suddenly over and any influence Te Tokawaru had was nearly all stripped as he fled back north in hiding. Te Tokawaru slowly built up his influence of resisting Europeans again, but this time it was without warfare. He encouraged passive resistance as he stayed at the large Māori settlement of Parihaka, directing Disruptions to land surveys at the time of around the 1880s. Te Tokawaru lived out the remaining of his days continuing his cause through passive protest even after being arrested. Through strategic warfare that led him to the steps of Wanganui and peaceful protest, Te Tokawaru gained much support for his views and his influence still continues today as meetings at Parihaka still happen to discuss the issue of land confiscation and what many Māori gave their lives for. That is the story behind Te Tokawaru's war.